So ladies and gentlemen, today on Two Cents Worth, we're going to take a quick look at probably one of the most strangest elections I ever covered as a journalist. And uh, this goes back to a political era where there was no internet, there was no social media, uh, there was very little of the what they call the modern conveniences of promoting or campaign, uh, promoting or uh, complaining about a campaign. Of course, it's the 1987 New Brunswick general election which put the very charismatic and the very popular Frank McKenna into power. And uh, he was so popular in that election, he had a complete sweep. Under the provincial legislative process in New Brunswick, there's uh, regions or ridings uh, that elect members of the Legislative Assembly. At the time, there was 58 regions of New Brunswick that had individual votes for seats towards the legislature and, of course, the party with the most seats would uh, either have a majority or minority government. Uh, yeah. There was no majority in this vote. This was a total and utter destruction of the Progressive Conservative Party uh, led by uh, Tricky Dicky Richard Hatfield, who basically, in my opinion, stayed too long. Now, uh, to give you a little bit of background, Frank McKenna was a rising star on the political scene in New Brunswick for a number of years, especially after he... Uh, took over the leadership from uh, two uh, very ineffective uh, liberal leaders at the time. And uh, McKenna came to prominence, especially when he defended our Acadian superstar a boxer, Yvonne Durrell, in a murder case where Durrell was uh, charged with uh, murder and an incident at his, uh, at his bar, at his uh, location in Bay St. Anne, and uh, McKenna... Uh, who actually had a mustache at the time uh, and was completely uh, different than the clean-cut uh, version that won the election, uh, used his legal prowess to uh, get Durrell acquitted of the charges. And what McKenna did, uh, directly or indirectly, used that popularity amongst uh, Acadians to uh, rise to a high level of recognition. But see, but by the time the 87 vote came about, it was very unique because Hatfield at the time was the only face of the provincial PCs in New Brunswick pretty well for 17 years. Yes, there were very competent people in his cabinet and MLAs that uh, were popular in the home region. But for some reason, Hatfield's popularity uh, with the younger people who voted with the Acadian population because he protected the Acadian population and their rights, he became almost like the, um, the consensus choice to run New Brunswick. He helped bring back the Constitution in 1982. He helped uh, language rights in New Brunswick. Got a lot of infrastructure done uh, in cooperation, actually, with the federal liberal government under Pierre Trudeau from 1970 until 87. So he did a lot of good work, but two things really held him back. He was getting a lot of controversy for his uh, weird, uh, what do you call it, off-ice peccadillos. Uh, allegedly, he was a uh, homosexual with pensions for having parties with young men. He was caught uh, for uh, marijuana on a uh, royal plane that was welcoming uh, the queen. Uh, and he'd be, he would have uh, moments of public, uh, you know, uh, strange movements, uh, especially in the party for Prince Charles and Lady Di when he went on, to sp uh, on a speech about how the fact the media was putting them down. And, you know, he, he knows the truth and everybody else is picking on them and all that. But... Uh, See, Hatfield, uh, Hatfield wasn't what you consider a, um, uh, uh, a disliked person until, you know, a lot of people thought he, uh, he had stayed too long. Now, when the vote that year in the election on October 15th, uh, McKenna won his home seat of Chatham. In the popular vote, uh, the Liberals got 60.39% uh, for 246,000 votes. Uh, Richard Halfield's PC party... Uh, he only got uh, 2859 and uh, the NDP actually did quite well, got 10%, but no seats. Now, um, the big problem for him started in 1985 again for Hatfield, where three St. John area PCMLAs tried to uh, uh, form a caucus revolt, uh, revolt and... Um, they basically said, you know, if you stay, we're going to get destroyed. They never knew how destroyed they were going to be, and that's what happened. Now, uh, hoping to boost his popularity enough to avoid defeat, Hatfield made a big risk. 
He called the election in the latest way possible. He was last voted in in 82, but he decided to go to the full five years and have it five years after his first election. Now, um, uh, Hatfield uh, got destroyed in his own writing, losing by uh, actually uh, a very well-known local teacher, Allison DeLong, uh, by 20 points. Now, uh, taking full responsibility for, the, for his defeat, he announced his resignation in the election. And um, uh, according to a lot of media, including myself, McKenna's liberals were like, you know, we were not going to, we knew we were going to win from day one. I predicted at the time, and I was working with Delazio News, I didn't say it publicly, but I predicted at the time the liberals might win, you know, 45 seats. Conservatives would keep the strongholds in the South and maybe one or two for the NDP. Now, um, the the only the only thing is about having no opposition in the provincial government. There was ramification to this, of course. There was no uh, no people could sit in the legislature and question or whatever. It led to the rise of the core party, led to later, later to the racist People Alliance Party, and there were more concerned about the rights of white English people within the PC framework than having the the party as a provincial representative. <coughs> the core party basically was. Uh, the right wing, uh, wing, right wing wing of the party that uh, took upon themselves to bring back the old PCs in the 1950s, that style, it's a 1990s mentality, and we're still paying it for right now. There's 10 to 20 percent of provincial electorate who uh, basically believe that uh, uh, French should have no rights, that uh, you know, uh, you, you should have everything, no bilingualism, uh, nothing for the north. Uh, you know, uh, cut, slash and, uh, slash and cut uh, taxes and all that. But that's another another podcast altogether. Now, the thing is, if you go riding by riding in New Brunswick and you see all the great MLAs that lost that year, uh, just to uh, just to show a few, you look at people like uh, uh, Fernand Dubé, uh, Percy Muckler, uh, Paul McIntyre and the rest of who became a senator, Emery, uh, Emery Robichaud and Karaket, uh, Stephen Porter and Carlton uh, South, uh, you know, uh, the big uh, uh, the big ones in the Southwest like Bev Harrison. Uh, you're looking at, um, uh, you know, uh, Malcolm McLeod and Albert, too, a lot, of, a lot of good conservative candidates. They all lost. Like, all these great, a whole generation of conservatives were wiped out in this election some came back especially percy muckler but some didn't now you gotta understand this was the first time in canadian history since the pi election in the mid-30s where it had a shutout and if you know anything about federal or provincial votes or state votes in the states in canada this doesn't happen every day but to have a complete sweep with only 60 percent of the popular vote show riding by riding you wanted three things they wanted him Hatfield out. They wanted Hatfield out. They wanted Hatfield out. This was in a leader like Charlie Van Horn, where there was a popularity already there. They could forgive the peccadillos. Uh, I don't think Hatfield was voted out because he was sometimes bizarre. I don't think he was voted out because he was a homosexual or alleged homosexual. I don't think he was voted out because he was caught by marijuana. It was time for the Conservative Party uh, to be like the Brian Mulroney Federals to adapt to the times, and it never, never did. Now, I can tell you this, there's been PC premiers since then, PC leaders. Majority of them are, are very uh, competent to the PC uh, cause. Uh, you look at people like David Allward, uh, Bernard Lord, who doesn't like me very much, who tried to get me fired once because I, I deigned to ask him a question about a strike once. Uh, uh, personally, I could have good or bad relations with the people, but he kept to the PC rhetoric. Not the federal conservative rhetoric, but the PC uh, provincial conservatives, progressive conservative style. Now, what do you do when you cover election that's 58 to nothing? How do you write a headline for that? I uh, can't remember what I wrote. I think I said something like Hatfield shut out. When Hatfield was touring the last two weeks of campaign, I'll give an example why we do is going to be bad. He came to Lorne, New Brunswick, which is a small community uh, below Jack River, New Brunswick, uh, Belden region. Uh, a local hall could only could only seat 400 people, and it was close to a thousand people inside and outside the building. The whole population of Lorne and some from the outsiding area came to celebrate 
Hatfield's ascension to the crown. And let me tell you, it was an ascension. Now, Frank McKenna, uh, I've never seen a politician like him ever before. He was more charismatic. He had a way with older people, younger people. He was a premier of the people. Maybe some people didn't like his decisions as others. But the period that the Liberals were in with New Brunswick was the last really boom time of the province. Um, and uh, we never really got it back. You look at people like Rayburn Doucette and Alan Marr, Emily's up north that helped a lot with development. A little shout out to Rayburn, who was kind of the unofficial deputy premier of the province for several years under McKenna. He did a lot to, uh, what do you call, uh, to put forward the, the McKenna, what do you call, project, or the McKenna, might as well say, miracle. Uh, but he never really, I don't remember them taking too much advantage of the 58 to nothing. They were cooperative with the other parties. And he could have said, listen, you know, uh, you know, full your party lost. Uh, PCs kept on going with Dennis Cochran and some other representatives. And I'm, but I, uh, but McKenna, there's a famous tape where he told him what the results are. He said it was 58 nothing. He kind of shrugged, saying, that's not what we wanted. I don't think anybody in the Liberal Party wanted the PCs uh, completely wiped out in New Brunswick because it's good to have uh, good voices in the legislature of all parties because that was the democracy is all about. But from a political uh, scientist standpoint, this was a disaster because this uh, this could never be predicted to happen in the modern era. Like I would expect, you know, where Hitler or Mussolini would kill all the opposition and you get voted in. This They never intentionally went out to kill the PC party. But Hatfield and his supporters, who didn't convince him to get out, that's what killed the party. And let me tell you, the party's not been the same since. Uh, they've embraced a little bit more right-wing attitude, but... Again, there are enough. Uh, there are fifty percent of the old PCs, which is better than nothing. So, anyway, on this uh, beautiful February morning, we wish you a happy post Super Bowl. If you're uh, a Kansas City fan, uh, congratulations. And if you're a 49ers fans, I told you so. As a Dallas Cowboy fan, we want no success for the 49ers. You know, um, I'm a person who wants Steve Young's head in the lance, and that sums it up right there. But we're not talking football. We're talking the political football. That uh, put it this way in, in Super Bowl terms, this was McKenna 165, Hatfield 0. <laughs> they couldn't score a touchdown if it was given to him, but anyway. Anyway, have a good day. Bye.